All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're taking a look at an updated tutorial on Discord voice and video settings. These are your personal user settings, not server settings, just so you don't get them confused. So when you open up your user settings, in the bottom left-hand corner of the Discord screen, you go down through all these different options over here on the sidebar, and you'll find voice and video under app settings. This controls your webcam and it also controls your microphone and your speakers and everything in between. So at the top of the page, you will find the input and output device settings. This is the pull down menu where you select whatever it is that your microphone that you're currently using. I recommend not just leaving it set to the default device because sometimes that borks up when a computer update happens or something else goes on. And this is just an easier way to make sure that everything works the way that you expect it to. The other one is your output device. This is your speakers, your headphones, whatever you use to hear the audio from your computer. You want to select that there, and then you can adjust the volumes below each one accordingly. I tend to leave the input volume at maximum. Uh, I tend to put the output volume at 100% in the middle. That way I have some leeway if I ever need to boost the volume because I can't hear people, something along those lines. So after that, if you're not certain whether or not your microphone is working, you can click on the let's, let's check button. This will allow you to see if you actually are getting any audio through your microphone. So you can test to make sure it's all working. And then after that, you have the input mode type. So when it comes to people hearing you, there's two ways to go. You can either have the, the actual system itself automatically detect your voice and open your microphone so that people can hear you when you're actually talking. And the automatic voice determining input sensitivity is actually pretty good. I'd actually leave that or you can set it up yourself manually by watching this and seeing like how loud it needs to be for it to detect your voice. And that's how you do voice activity. But if you're concerned with or know you have a lot of background audio problems like fans or kids screaming or cars outside, I recommend push to talk. And then you can click on this shortcut button to record by pressing on whatever key you want to be your push to talk hotkey, your shortcut. And then you can set the release delay so that like it'll wait a couple milliseconds or seconds after you stop pressing the button before it cuts off so that people can still hear you talking because some people Myself sometimes included, we'll keep talking like a brief moment after we stop pressing the button. It's just force of habit. That's how you set that up. Then down here we have the video settings. This is where you select the camera that you want to use for your webcam. And then if you want to hide whatever is in the background behind you, you can select from these preset either animations or you can have a still picture or you can just blur it, which is the default. Um, you can also set a custom background, but you need to pay for Nitro in order to unlock that. So let's test that feature out. Let me turn on my webcam. I think, yeah, it should. Oh, there it goes. Hello, everyone. It seems to be working pretty well, and we can showcase what each one of these looks like by testing it here for a moment. Uh, there we go. You got like an animated background. That looks kind of neat. Looks kind of neat. We've also got like, I'm a crazy hacker man. Yeah, look, there's digital things going on back there. This actually works pretty well. I mean, I do have a nicer Logitech Brio uh, webcam, but that, that works pretty well. I'm just going to leave it at blur, though, so you can see I've got, like, an extra computer behind me and everything. And then after this, you've got some other advanced features. These are noise suppression. If you find there's a lot of background noise in your microphone, despite using push-to-talk over voice activation, you can enable a noise suppression, which uses this crisp technology in order to automatically remove sounds and echo and all that good stuff. Down here, you can set up uh, video codec stuff. Do you want to use the open H.264 Cisco systems codec? Yes or no. I see no reason why you shouldn't because it uses hardware acceleration to make things smoother and less laggy, which is always a good thing. Uh, same thing down here with the H.264 hardware acceleration. It uses your graphics card to make things smoother and nicer. So if you have a powerful graphics card, of course, use it. it. It'll make things nicer. Even if you have like an onboard in your CPU, it should make things nice and buttery smooth. Um, down here, we've got the voice processing. Do you want to do echo cancellation? I would definitely recommend that. It'll keep it from like hearing 
echoes of your voice, especially from like if you're playing with your microphone right next to your mouth and your headset's like right next to it. You've also got noise reduction, another really good one. And something I love is automatic gain control. This means it'll try to detect the volume of your voice and microphone and try to keep it from obliterating everybody else in the room with you. And then down here, we have some quality of service stuff. Uh, you can make it so that Discord has packet priority on your network. I generally would only say use that if you have a reason to, like you're on like a troubleshooting forum and you're figuring that out. Otherwise, I would leave that off. Attenuation is where it reduces the volume of other things on your computer so that you can be heard by other people or you can hear other people while you're in a very loud video game, but you don't want to turn the volume down yourself. Uh, this can let you t tell how much you want it to attenuate the audio and whether it's when you speak or when other people speak. Uh, down here, we have the audio subsystem. That is which piece of technology inside of your computer do you want Discord to process your audio with? Standard is like the regular release version of your audio. That's the latest version that's stable and f fun and all that good stuff. Legacy is the outdated version that uses old tech. Sometimes they recommend you use that if you're experiencing glitchiness or lag on Discord. And then if you want to test new stuff, you can mess with the experimental. Down here we have screen share stuff. Do you want to use the latest tech? I would recommend yes, because it's the latest and greatest. Using experimental stuff to capture your audio sounds like you're playing with beta stuff, but that's actually the latest release of what they're using to capture system audio so you can share it when you share your game or you share your screen to your other to your friends and people on Discord. And then we have voice diagnostics. Show a warning when Discord's not detecting audio from your microphone. This is very useful. That way, if something happens to your microphone, like you touch it and it gets like a spark of static electricity and stops working for a minute, it'll tell you if something's wrong. And then we've got di diagnostic audio recording. If you want to like check because something's wrong, so you can get technical support from Discord. You can enable that. <laughs> Discord technical support's not super great because they've got, you know, millions of users and not a lot of people to do that. And then it also has a debug log in case something's happening or some weird bugginess is going on. This is on by default. You can remove it. Um, and that is the short version or the long and short version of your um, audio and video settings. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, throw that in the comment section below, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everyone.